I was saying in the previous part that I I envy dead saints and I, I don't even I think I don't know does that make me weird creepy like an oddball a weirdo some anomalous creep I don't know whatever I don't care but when you've been persecuted for as long as I have been you will understand where I'm coming from I believe people in persecuting nations get where I'm coming from to live is Christ but to die is gain I envy dead saints because this world is just worthless it's so worthless and it just keeps getting worse and worse people keep getting worse and worse they're so blase it's like I can I can I can pierce like almost with x-ray vision into their hearts to see the apathy just the nonchalance how cavalier they are oh guys just carrying on marrying being given in marriage having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof carrying on like there is nothing severely broken with this whole thing so while indeed may he rest in peace i find it troubling that i i coveted another guy that passed away long ago well not long ago it's quite a stretch to say that but some years back like 2015 nabil Qureshi. he was raised a muslim converted to christianity and got to live a few years as a christian was a married man had kids and everything and then he died from cancer and he was uh, he's uh, nabil was one year older than me born 1983 when he died he was like what 35 or something still very young i was like god why why didn't you give nabil my years why didn't you give him my years and take me instead because he had something to look forward to he had kids a wife to love a whole Muslim community to bring to you a thriving ministry he wasn't so severely persecuted and abandoned by family that he did not know he's left from his right anymore I am why spare why spare me living this worthless life shadow ban nobody's even listening to me everybody is afflicting me and everywhere I look I see a Hamas potential in the street it's like I've got double vision now where everywhere I walk I see the carnage that has been done to those Israelis I can't I, I can't live with all that pain to carry as one person you should have just taken me because Nabil had time had people sorry that he had to care for but you gave him the cancer you gave him the the, the youthful death the you know the early death you 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 burdened his family with all of that grief when people around me are acting like they wouldn't even care if I dropped dead so spare me the apathy of the earth who are acting like they don't care what's going on with me and let me go home where finally I've got friends I've got family I've got people who love me I'm at peace and I don't have to be burdened with with so much pain in my heart every single day at the wickedness of the world that I can't take it in my stride anymore if I'm in heaven there is a sense of justice even though there will be a holy wrath over the wickedness on the earth down below it will be within an ecosystem where everything is holy and we are determined and guaranteed to ultimately effect justice on the earth the tribulation and also in the millennial reign we're gonna come and righteously reign with you so I mean I will still get to see the wickedness of the earth and all that carnage from above but at least from a vantage point where I don't have to be subjugated to the futility of this body of death and the futility of people's apathy their cavalier like nonchalant thing that they're doing as they're walking around I, I don't like it for me it is the apathy it is the 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 the, the blase disposition I, I I just don't get it I don't get it but I guess you know my thoughts his thoughts are not mine his his, way, his ways and his thoughts are higher loftier than mine and no one can say to the potter as pottery what have you done I cannot look at God and say make me differently change my death date you determined everything for its purposes including the wicked for the day of trouble so I guess this is my cross to bear I guess I gotta get to whatever age I gotta get before I go to heaven but the striving the striving the striving for me it is the striving everybody got to strive to enter heaven but some more than others and my striving is in solitude I am alone I am bereft with sorrow I am completely stock seal alien and I am trying really hard every single day to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling and every single day I freak out at all of the attempts at my faith I freak out at all of the attempts at my walk with God and all of the attempts at trying to make me compromise the level of temptation is astronomical it is out of this world and while I know that the Lord does not tempt anybody and that he will give us a way out when we are tempted what I am certain of is that he makes allowance for the devil to tempt us and some more than others and I'm like but God why have you set me apart to be tempted so loftily why am I more tempted than the regular South African Christian why am I more tempted than the regular Christian in a nation that is not supposed to be persecuting Christians why am I in this position why am I living the life of an Iranian convert to Christianity in a country that is supposed to be Christian 
Why have I no support? Why am I in this alone? Why am I so in this alone that thoroughly 2 Timothy 3 is being fulfilled in my life where Janus and Jambres are trying to worm their way into my life, seeking to burden me with passions and various sins. These men that, that opportunistically recognize that a woman is struggling and will do anything, will break down any door to get, the, get to her real quickly. I mean, just the bravado to look at me as first come, first served. For me, is it's been gnawing at me alive. It's been eating away at me like a gangrene. The fact that there are men who thoroughly think I met her first. Get first come, first serve, now like a game. Like, like, Dijon. You, you like proper. The earlier you arrive, the, the, the more food you get. So people trying to loot me, plunder me. Use me as something that is expandable, like spread me flat. Cut me into 12 pieces. And, 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 and apportion them to 12 men. That's how people are looking at me. But I guess no servant is greater than his master, right? Because they did the same thing with Christ when he was dying. They cast lots for his garments. And now men are casting lots for my hand. Lots to be the first ones to have sex with me after 12 years of being celibate. Lots to go and grab a woman that everybody does. Like the family's treating her like trash, but hey, she still looks goodish. So I'll take it. Lots being cast for when as a human being, you're a person. And yet people are trafficking like I am like proper trying to traffic you. Your body parts scattered all over the show. Cutting you into millions of pieces so each and every single one of them can have a piece of you and then burp. Why do I have to be that badly, that severely tempted? Because not every Christian goes through it. But again, no, you know, you can't say to God, what have you done? You can't say to God, what have you done? All I know is that for years, just like Elijah, I have asked the Lord to take me, take me. I will ride out a cancer no matter how painful it is. But please just give me a deadline date to this thing. Take me. I want to go home. There's nothing left for me here. There's nothing left for me. A servant has no honor in his own hometown. A prophet has no honor in his own hometown. There is nothing for me here. Ever since coming to Christ, everybody has spat on my shoes like proper. No, let me go home. I found the pearl of great price. Hallelujah. The other day I was even thinking I wish I had never been born. And then I thought about all the times in my life that I could have died. And I was like, no, I, should, I could not have possibly died at that time and been safe. So this is the only time. The only thing that would have ever made me safe in heaven would have been an abortion. So I was like, why didn't my mom just abort me? Because then I would have just gone straight up to heaven just like David and Bathsheba's miscarried baby. Everything else in between would have rendered me hellbound. But then after getting redeemed, I then lived this life that makes me want to be dead. I have finally found the path of life, but I'm struggling to stay alive in it. I'm struggling to stay alive. I'm struggling to occupy in it. So it's like I can't catch a break. Everything that everybody's getting, I just can't get it. I can't get my degree. I can't do what everybody else is trying to do. Just like grow up and do what people do. They marry. They go on right ahead and start businesses. They, they cry. They celebrate. They bury people. They give birth. But I must just be stacking doodle. Like Papa, just sit around and gather dust until I die. But hey, guess what? I got born again. So I mean, God, if that's the case, how about you then cut that, that, that sorrow short? Cut it short. Let me go home. I found you. Death is not always a rejoice, a, a, a celebratory event. Given that nobody really dies, the spirit continues to linger on. It's only good news when you've, when you've embraced the gospel. So I found the pearl of great price. I found the narrow road that leads to life that few people found. I got the thing that a lot of people planned without getting. I got the aha moment. It clicked. I got it. And now that I have it, I am being made to just merely exist from the age of 29 until God knows when just merely exist like just draw breath but hey you got redemption just draw breath because that's literally all I do I draw breath I'm not living this is not a life I am not doing what people do as they progress milestones throughout their lives I'm just living merely existing not living correction so why didn't you just take me as soon as I gave my life to you, if at all you truly wanted me as a disciple? Save me and then throw me in a car accident. At this point, I would much rather take the fate of the thief on the cross that repented on his deathbed. Just five seconds as a Christian, but hey, at least I get to avoid hellfire. I've gotten to a point where I'm thinking that way. I'm like, God, really, just like that. I was born just in jail to merely exist at some point in my life. No matter what I would try to do, it would take me nowhere. Why would everybody target me so much? Why would people refuse that I should have basic, basic things, basic things, basic like proper? How in the world have I not fallen pregnant by now? 
How did that even happen? When since the age of 22, I've wanted children. How did that even happen? Like, can people be this callous? If that's the case, can I just go home? Can I just go home? And then I get a rapture dream where I'm about to go home. I get woken up out of it by a bad headache that is as a result of demonic attack. And <coughs> instead of celebrating the, the great elation, the, the emotion, the euphoria that I felt in my dream, I was burdened by it because it, it was the equivalent of dying, going to heaven and being told by God, it's not yet your time, go back. Just like that one testimony of that guy who died, went to heaven and had to go back and could not for the rest of his life ever be normal until he, while well, he's still alive today, still struggling with depression, still struggling, basically finish this thing. It's like, I'm here. Okay. I got to finish like a child with a whole bunch of broccoli on the plate. And the mom is telling them you can't have dessert until you finish the food. You can't have dessert until you finish the food. So you got to go and pick at that broccoli, chew slowly, struggle to swallow, breathe in and out, really have a hard time just so you can get to the ice cream. That's what that guy is doing on earth today. And like him, I'm chewing through broccoli and it's hard. And every time I look at that broccoli that is left on the plate, it looks like I never even got through the first leaf. I didn't get through anything. It looks like I didn't even touch a single carrot. I did not touch a single cabbage leaf. Everything, it looks like it's still on the plate that mommy has told me if I don't finish all of my veggies. It feels like such a stretch. One day is so long. A month is like 10 years and I still got all this cabbage on my plate. The rapture is my ice cream and I don't know when it is. Death is my ice cream and I don't know when it is. I just want to go home. I don't want to be here. I understand the pearl of great price. I know there is heaven to be embraced. I've done the time. I, I feel like I'm done. I'm finished. I, I know what happens when we die. I found out the answer to the big question that everybody has. And I have studied it. I have gone deep into it. I have investigated it. I have turned over the page. I have shaken every tea tree and looked under every rock, understood what needs to be done to enter into the kingdom of heaven and that there is eternal life to be enjoyed. Now, I want to be done. I've done my time. The world hates disciples. I've been hated. In this world, you will have many troubles, but take heart, I've overcome the world. I've endured my troubles. The world hates disciples. I have endured the hatred. They will throw you out the synagogues from now on a day is coming when those who persecute you will do so thinking they're doing a service to God. I've endured that, been kicked out of synagogues, out of e churches. From now on, a man's enemies will be members of their own households. I've endured that. I've had enmity with my family, that level of striving, where they treat me like I ain't Jack. A servant has no honor in his own hometown. I live in South Africa, where my entire government is standing for Hamas so proper. I get it. I've gone through it. Count the cost of being a disciple. I've done exactly that. I've not killed myself. He who endures to the end will be saved. I've done it all. I have basically experienced the Christian experience just without the answered prayer. And at this point, I'm like, it doesn't matter because frankly, I would much rather inherit that which I has not seen, no ear heard, no mind conceived in heaven. Like I don't even care anymore. I don't care about this earth and its acquisitions. I don't. I just want to go home. I hate this world with a passion, a flaming red passion. I just want to go home, but I can't take myself there. I cannot fast track this activity. The sickness in my body is gone because I went and I took meds for it due to the fact that I understood it was a low key murder by cough, suicide by cough, suicide by health abandonment, suicide by do not resuscitate. If I just left a, a, a chest infection to flourish until it gets to a point where it's lethal, like it's a 1802 and they have not yet, or what's this like 1209 and they have not yet invented penicillin. I did what I was supposed to do that I might not grieve God, but here it is that I'm healthy again. The cough is gone. <laughs> There's nothing left in my chest. Get healthy again. Everything is thriving. Everything in my body is flying properly. My, my veins have got blood coursing through them. There's life for life is in the blood, but I'm tired. I'm exhausted. At this point, I feel as if though may my years be given to some irresponsible derelict that is about to die today outside of Christ. Let them take all my years. Let that random buffoon of a Solomon Grundy that is born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, took it on Thursday, worse on Friday, died on Saturday, buried on Sunday to go to hell. That is the life of Solomon Grundy. Give Solomon Grundy my years that they might maybe get old and wise because I already have eternal life. I already have it. Like proper, can I just go home? Can I just, I don't want to be here. I don't care about, I, I'm not leaving anything behind. I don't have children to wonder who's going to take care of them. I don't have a family that needs me.
but I can't go. I'm here. Kidudes, gathering dust, woman cooking at the back of my mom's house, living on an earth that does not care about other people. Living in a country whose president stands with terrorists, even though he's not even an Arab. I can't even a book anymore. Is he into ancestral worship? What does he do? I don't know. But he's certainly pro Hamas. However, politically, politically correctly stating himself as one who is pro Palestine. Standing in solidarity with Hamas. <coughs> you mean Palestine. Palestine, I mean Hamas. That, that's, our pre that, that's, my, that's where I'm at. Nothing is trustworthy. Nothing. Nothing and no one. Aye, guys, we're taking anyway, uh, that's this world. Like, Papa, I just feel as if though these people walking like her. As my family, like my friends, like what the heck is going on in their minds? I don't, I don't know. What in the world are they thinking every single day when they have achieved such a travesty in the life of an innocent woman? Innocent women and men, because I'm not their only victim. How in the world you can cause so much destruction? It is bamu, it is spiritual that you are unleashing as a trigger happy criminal, amateur, in a bank, just shooting people dead in Jafela, and then oof, put it in your back pocket, this gun of yours. And you just go on and be merry. And then you make people want to die. Just like Elijah. Just like, so basically you are like uh, Jezebel. Causing a man to flee into the wilderness, seeking the Lord's face for death. Until God tells him, get up and eat your journey is still too great. There are 7,000 others that have not knelt to bail. But before you get to the point of being comforted, all you want to do is die. Elijah never died. He got caught up at the river Jordan. He got raptured. But at some point he wanted to die because he just felt like he was done. Why? Because he felt like what he was doing was useless. Why? Because after everything you do, that whole miracle on Mount Carmel, all of this attempt at convincing people to love Jesus Christ, people are still pursuing you for death. You're still running into the wilderness. You're still being told me the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow Elijah is not dead. Like after all that, you have proven that God is God of the miracle of Mount Carmel. And that Baal is not God. And yet there is somebody still out here pursuing you, trying to kill you because they still want to somehow prove, despite having already been disproven, that Baal is God. Like, take your earth, world. Take it. In the dream that I had with the rapture, almost about to happen, I was at a concert evangelizing people that could not care less to heed me. And Christians were just these ignored, outnumbered, disregarded people. And when the sky opened up and Christ was obviously at the door, everybody saw what was going on in heaven for crying out loud. And yet they still were nonchalant and la -di da blase. I guess indeed it is true. Only those that are watching are truly going to know that whole thing happening for what it is. Because here it is that there are human biologics being spoken about by the American Congress of alien bodies. And you are still dancing. Alien life forces are being spoken about. You're still dancing. Hauntings are a thing. Witchcraft is like a whole marvelous thing doing its thing out in these streets. Rolling around. Free to pinky pinky the living delights out of you because they live in the toilet wearing a pink panty uh, uh, Terrorizing little girls in schools like these things are happening. Everybody's aware of it more and more people are getting involved in darkness And so you're citing deeper and deeper contents hauntings in your lives So essentially the sky has opened the cosmos has peeled opened meaning that this earth is no longer a going concern that we can just push anymore. The Lord is about to grab his church and judge it, but despite all that which you are observing, that is anomalous, a strange, in comparison anyway, to what you used to see when you were growing up. The world has gone really dark, you can tell, but you think you still have another 50 years to go. You are like one who is seeing heaven open, and yet we are the only ones that are brimming with excitement. Only once. You have caused Christians to be like hospital admissions uh, in upon landing in heaven for really? We get to heaven like hospital admissions. The way that we were so bruised and battered on earth, our souls nearly died. We nearly were pushed to the end of ourselves. But if God did not cut these days short, none of us would be saved. We enter in. Naughty. As through the fire by the skin of our teeth. That's how we go into heaven. Because you've made sure you've made our life such a living nightmare. So it is that it becomes real hard to turn the other cheek. How frequently do I keep dissing everybody that's all up in my grill? It's because I'm struggling to turn the other cheek. I'm supposed to be godly. Guard out my eye. Cut off my hand. According to the letter of the churches, to the, the letter to the churches in the book of Revelation, the church at Ephesus, there was a challenge there where the church is struggling with love. They have abandoned their first love. So when you lack love, according to 1 Corinthians 13, when you give prophecies and when you speak in tongues and do all different kinds of wonderful things, you might as well be a loud gong or a clanging cymbal. And the way that I'm so harsh and feisty, I'm struggling to speak with gentleness. And so you're threatening my general thing that I'm doing as a Christian to that of being like the church at Ephesus. It gets left behind because their works are not found complete in the sight of God. Just like Sardis, just like Thyatira, just like Laodicea, just like Pergamum. They're all found wanting except for Smyrna and Philadelphia. And here it is that I'm trying real hard to be Philadelphian, not letting anybody take my crown. But every day is like a millennium. It's a drag. 
it's a drag my heart is broken the lord is telling me not to be anxious but my heart is sick because my hope is deferred so i can't help but be anxious essentially i'm at the end of myself and god said if he did not cut these days short even i wouldn't be saved even i wouldn't be saved if you regard me as righteous what then will be of you ungodly and sinner since judgment has begun with me judgment begins with the church of the lord jesus christ uh, thus saith the lord in one peter i believe verse four and if at all judgment begins with us what then for you the ungodly and the sinner if i'm struggling to keep up with love if i am struggling and i'm sounding more like a loud gong and a clanging cymbal the way i'm so upset at people if i'm struggling to turn the other cheek if i am having a hard time gouging out my eye if i can't help but be feisty and, and yell at you and tell you woe to you pharisee you teacher of the law if i can't help but be carabo, catty feisty always just hissing all over the show shrewd as a dove as shrewd as a snake though innocent as a, as, as a dove if at all i can't help but be that thing if i can't help but be that thing if at all you've gotten me to this point and i'm entering heaven by the skin of my teeth as through the fire what of you ungodly and sinner if i have built my house upon the rock but i'm starting to feel an earthquake uh, an earthquake threatening my foundations what of you who have built your house upon the sand seriously speaking you are fat seriously speaking you are drunk with wine you are filled with much you have everything you need and yet you have the brazen audacity so much you've got the brazen audacity to be irreverent towards god consult the sangoma you've got like a whole job but you're greedy you're greedy you want another one you love the world the things of this world the love of the flesh the love of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is having a field day with you eating away at your flesh like necrotizing fasciitis such that even though you've got a whole job that is paying for your kids school fees it has bought you new golf clubs it has given you an extension of the bathroom in your house and yet because you want to become the senior manager from the project management job that you're working you went and you consulted you have got everything you are filled with wine you are filled with much food you are fat you haven't gone to the gym in a minute because you don't have time to go to the gym given that you're so busy on the job and with all that which you have you call yourself a christian however nonetheless one that is incredibly irreverent bewitching colleagues in the office so if at all garabo can remain faithful to god without even touching a single magic wand in years of want squalor poverty destitution suffering lack in the worst way living in these hard knock conditions that don't make no sense for a woman my age geriatric womb no husband nothing at all to look forward to if a woman in my shoes has held on to jesus for dear life even though i'm struggling with love right now because i'm a loud gong and a clanging symbol what of you who's got everything you need but you're calling yourself a christian and then you go and you bewitch somebody so that you get the promotion you've already got kids in school you've already got golf clubs you've already got an unsweet bathroom you've already got a swimming pool you are planning on putting in your backyard without the job promotion without the salary increase but no you want more oh greedy rando that loves this world and so you are at enmity with god you've loved this flesh the boastful pride of life you want to get to say i bought a new car even though you already have one that's operational and it's only two years old it only was fresh off the showroom floor two years ago but you want another one why because you're competing with things 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 and so much so are you doing that that even though you don't need to frankly you are literally destroying your soul just to get a promotion Uzbizums are running you in church every single sunday if judgment has begun with karabo look at karabo's life what then for you ungodly and sinner what then for you who has not given your life over to the lord the lukewarm church the conglomerate that are gathering for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear for you cannot endure sound doctrine and so having those itching ears you gather for yourself a crayflow dollar that's going to tell you god does not want you poor you're sitting in that position that you're sitting looking at Garabo and even though I have a piety that exceeds yours it's clear I've got a godliness that is like that of children it's clear it exceeds that of the Pharisees it's clear I've put my hand to the plow and not looked back it's clear I've taken up my cross and followed Jesus it's clear I'm suffering persecution it's clear I am in Christ in a way that you cannot deny I am above reproach you nonetheless are able to find a reason for why it is that you're going to enter into heaven while I am struggling to you somehow managed to find it in the word of God that you're entering into heaven because you may misplaced God's word read only five scriptures and walked around with that pamphlet for a Bible and imagined that that was all you needed to get into heaven without even ever really truly surrendering your life to the most high and because apparently allegedly your sins are removed from you past present and a future and there is nothing wrong that you can ever do in the sight of God for he has propitiated for you with his blood and been your substitution you then can do the work of a sangom I live like the devil and guess what no it's okay you get to chill around in heaven anyway despite all those dirty deeds of darkness because you said the sinner's prayer 
because you said the sinner's prayer because god has propitiated for you so i mean really if god has propitiated for you has he also propitiated for me why then is my life so much harder than yours is he then on that day not an unjust god who is he going to give favor to your victims who are under your spells or you sorry who is the lord going to gaze upon with favor if at all he is god and he's just he hates unequal skills he will not leave any sin unpunished but you imagine you're cloaked under this ubiquitous generalistic propitiation that the lord has you know shed his blood for you you have been covered you claim you're blessed and highly favored because you have it all must the lord protect you since you are in the fold apparently allegedly or must he protect garabo since she's one of your victims who is the lord going to gaze upon with coverage people in these streets all of y'all call yourselves christian we're all in this apparently kumbaya together if the rapture should happen allegedly we're all going home together right yeah so what is the lord just because you said the sinner's prayer gonna disregard the fact that you took garabo's career away but hey you're dangling a giant cross in front of your chest in the office as you walk around so i guess that makes you one of us there's goats, right? And then there's sheep. Your goats. There's Cain, right? And then there's Abel. Your Cain. There's the righteous and there's the wicked. There's the godly and then there's the sinner. There are those propitiated for. And then there are those who are naive. And what you are today is naive. You cannot anticipate you're going to enter heaven. If anything, Matthew 7 has made it clear. And Luke 13, repent or perish. Matthew 7, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? And in your name cast out many demons. And in your name did many mighty miracles. And the Lord will tell you, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. You feel irritated with me. Indeed, it is written of you in 2 Timothy 3 that you will despise those who do good. And you will call good evil and evil good. And e yeah, exactly. You will call bitter sweet. You will trade in that which is great for what is wicked. You will roam these streets and ill-gotten gain, love the world, the things of this world, the boastful pride of life, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes. You will run these streets with it. You will not gouge out your eye, cut off your hand. You will allow your eyes to linger until you've committed adult adultery with your heart. You will allow your, your heart to linger until you've committed murder with the heart. Now check yourself to see if you're in the faith and then one day anticipate to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because to you, the only difference between the person going to hell and you is the fact that you said a sinner's prayer, not so much your life. And then you go and you butcher scriptures out of context in the word of God. Ephesians chapter 1, for instance. It's not of anything that I've done, but the free gift of God. And so you claim that what I'm doing is preaching a works-based salvation where the Lord makes it clear that faith without works is dead. That you cannot say according to 1 John that you are of the light or of the kingdom of heaven and yet walk in darkness. On that day you lie and the truth of God is not in you. But you're not doing that, are you? You're not testing to see if you're in the faith. You're not working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You are not beating your flesh into submission. You're not holding by the Holy Spirit your deeds to the captivity of the Holy Spirit. Because you understand that you are warring with the body of death. You are not striving as Karabo is striving. But somehow God is going to be like, I guess you're less Christian than her. But nonetheless, you're all Christian. Together, we are just all Christian. Just lesser are you guys, Christians. No. God is not mocked. Do not be deceived, okay? Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap, okay? Whatever it is that you sow to the flesh, you will reap, you will reap from it corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life. Right now, when you're sitting around in a coven, calling yourself a Christian... You've got a covenant lifestyle, a devil lifestyle, a lawyer. But you call yourself a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. God says you lie and the truth of God is not in you when you say you are of him. You are a sheep. You are a wolf sort of in sheep's clothing. You are a goat amidst a sheep. You are tares among wheat. And you are mocking him. And God is not mocked. So do not be deceived. The fact that you have made a woman want to die has converted you into nothing but Jezebel. That rando prophet wannabe prophetess in Israel that caused the man to be namby pamby wearing a panty for a hat unprepared to do that which was right in the sight of god because of being married to a bad girl that was persecuting god's servants so much that one of them fled into the wilderness imagining there's nothing left for me to do here anymore because all she can do is kill us all if you are busy chasing god's servants to a point of wanting to die because there's nothing left anymore to live for if, if at all there's nothing at all that we can look forward to because of what you've done honey you are jezebel on that day and oh how women hate to be called jezebel and anybody at all that, that takes you in their stride, handles you, is prepared to run with you into the future according to the God, the Lord's word in the book of Revelation to the letter to the church of Thyatira. Those who tolerate you are going to be thrown into great, not just any kind of tribulation, but a great tribulation. And then Jezebel herself will be thrown on a sick bed. South Africa is a nation that tolerates that woman Jezebel. She is Thyatira. Mm, that is South Africa, but she's also Laodicea. South Africa is also Sardis. South Africa has everything. Pergamum. I know where you live where Satan has his throne proper. That's where this country is. The whole world at large has got some issues, but my country, oh my, how they love to fly in bread. Never mind on brooms. The way Holoyang tactlessly got 
Why is this even my life? Why is a rapture dream not encouraging to me? But saddening. Why am I grieving the loss of my womb? Why am I grieving the loss of love for my husband? Why am I grieving loss of finances to be able to walk into a store and buy myself a chocolate because I feel like one today? Why have I not eaten some of my favorite foods? Why haven't I seen a dentist in years? Why haven't I seen a gynecologist in years? Why have I not seen a dermatologist for my skin condition? Why is that even a thing? But you're sitting, earning chunky salaries, having stolen other people's careers, having pulled rugs from under people's feet, thrown them under buses, and then you hope to go to heaven when you die? My goodness, you're not safe. I can only long to go to heaven right now because I've got a guarantee in my spirit there is a deposit I've got an assurance of salvation the spirit within me testifies with God that I am a daughter of God and so I can easily just throw comments around like I, I just want to die because I know that I'm safe in death to live is Christ but to die is gain and precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints but some of y'all are nowhere near ready to die and yet you are living so dangerously. You are skating on thin ice, grieving God, raising up his wrath to the brim of itself. The wine press of the wrath of God has gotten to the height of itself. He is mad at you, mad enough to snuff you out, mad enough to suddenly give you a death. You are not safe. When you die, you will discover that you are among those that are going to say to him, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? And in your name did many mighty miracles. And in your name cast out many demons. And he will tell you, depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. You are among those. You will be told to by the Lord that when I was hungry, you didn't give me food. When I was naked, you didn't give me clothes. When I was in prison and sick, you didn't visit me. You showed me no hospitality at all. And you will be like, God, but when did I never do these things for you? And he will say you never did them for the least of my disciples and so you didn't do it for me. You were built upon the sand. You were a hypocrite also. Woe to you. Woe to you, Pharisee, you teacher of the law, you. Careful to clean the cup on the outside, but inside it is dirty. You are like whitewashed tombs. Outside it's all whitewashed, but inside there's nothing but dead man's bones. Born dead in trespasses and sins and never ever, ever got risen up. You were never a Lazarus, ever. You've never been saved. You're demons, you left us for you were never of us and yet, and yet. You're in the church every Sunday, my God is able, while living a cavalier, nonchalant, la di da, blase life, in the climate of all of the witchcraft you have cast against a friend, a family member, maybe even some of your children. You are living lives like the devil, and you are using the Bible to mock God, thinking that it is a means for a financial gain, this Christianity. Always quoting scripture, walking around with Bibles under your armpits, but you don't know God from a bar of soap, because your deeds leave a lot to be desired. You are not bearing fruit. You will know them by their fruit. Your deeds leave a lot to be desired. According to God, if you don't bear fruit, he's going to cut you off because you're not engrafted into the branch. And he's going to bind you together as a bunch, a conglomerate, and throw you into hellfire. And in that place, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of eternity. And the smoke of your torment will rise up forever. And you will have remembered that you were told these things. But then said, Garabo is too extreme. She's too radical. You are walking in the darkness. How in the world are you not rising up against a leader, a president, that is standing for carnage? How is he even our leader? How is now Lady Pandora still dealing with foreign affairs? In a Christian country, I'm sorry. I mean, if, if an American government, America, has afflicted the living daylights out of me, but they've done one thing right so far. We'll see what happens when the rubber hits, hits the road. They've stood with Israel, because that's what makes sense. H hence why Iran calls them the great Satan. Let them call them whatever, because Gwenshab, really nothing matters that comes out of their mouths anymore. Because they've been already be de been defeated before they even opened their mouths. But when you are a Christian nation, a country that stands for Jesus, you are not one of the countries in Africa, like perhaps Morocco, that is largely Islamic. And so it makes sense why you would be pro-Palestine. You are a Christian nation, South Africa. I'm sorry, what are you doing? Your national anthem, do you want me to sing it? Yeah, exactly. Eddie Blow and then... um. Uh, or what is this uh, sounds the call right they the, the, those two are not really but the two um vernacular our national anthem is christian morena christian the christian god it's not islamic god it's not a ubiquitous god it's not a generalistic god so if our national anthem is christian what in the world are you doing standing for any islamic country or declared jihad war against a, 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 a the only democ what are you doing south africa against the only democracy in the middle east what are you doing? You have obviously on that day fallen away from your first love. You have completely forgotten God. You have neglected him. You have abandoned him. You have run far away from God and sat with these enemies and dined and whined with them. You're like Solomon who went and took so many foreign wives that by the end of your life, God had made a shame out of you. That's what South Africa's like. You are Christian in name only, nominal, to a point where the government cannot stand 
with its Christian allies across the world. South Africa's support for Palestine, I don't even know how in the world that got there. I don't know how we got there. I properly have no clue under heaven how we got there. They're standing with all of the world's atheists and all of the world's Muslims at the expense of all of the world's Christians. They're hanging out with China, they're hanging out with Russia, they're hanging out for crying out loud with all the, with all Islamic nations, chilling with Iran, going to bed for crying out loud with Hamas, what are you doing? It is no wonder, therefore, as a nation, you're this judged. It is no wonder you're persecuting your Christians the way that I'm persecuted. It is no wonder you have abandoned your people to so much striving and suffering. It is no wonder we're suffering with unemployment, gender-based violence, all of these issues. God has turned his face away from you. So, as among one of the only people that are standing for what is right in this nation, it makes sense that I'm so persecuted. But God is then going to take me out alone, is he not? Just like he does with Noah, Jacob, and Job. Daniel and Job. The Lord will rescue just his remnant and then leave the rest of y'all to be torched. A wicked and perverse generation rolling these streets calling itself Christian however your hearts are far from God Gosisigelele shut up with that national anthem don't even bother don't even bother Niskarabel Kifilankara once and for all how about you just light the fire like the prophets of Baal and start burning yourself chanting chanting and asking Baal to bring the fire down from heaven since we are at Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel now South Africa is at a point of no return proper you are at Mount Carmel and I and many other Christians are like Elijah we have shown you that God is God if God is God serve God if Baal is God serve Baal but no you are busy cutting yourselves hoping to bring fire from on high since you are standing standing indeed with all of those islamic gods stand with veil blowing no bell work when but then man be confident enough in your evil to admit that you're jezebel stop calling yourselves christian that woman jezebel claims herself a prophetess indeed she loves to call herself a believer but she's not stop calling yourself a christian nation south africa call a spade a spade call yourself Baal worshippers convert all of South Africa into an Islamic nation scrap the national anthem and make it something in the name of Allah because then on that day you'll be more honest than what you currently are at present you're just this namby pamby hypocrite and nobody likes a hypocrite nobody likes a hypocrite you are lackluster you are seeker sensitive you are lukewarm you are neither hot nor cold you are with a reputation for being alive as a country even though you are dead stop calling yourselves a Christian nation since all you've done all these years is stand more for Islam or stand more for Islamic terrorism ally with Islamic partners at the expense of Christians in the land just call yourself a Muslim nation once and for all uh, they would love to take you they would love to take you already they're on a mission to take over all of Africa just allow yourselves to just fall lie flat dormant on the floor like a doormat and change even your national anthem allow them to coo you South Africa because in spirit you are gone already you are gone to atheistic countries. You are gone to Islam. You are gone to ancestral worship. Do not mock God by claiming yourselves believers because you're not. All of your celebrities are busy twasaring at you in these streets. Everybody that does not want to do this ancestral worship rubbish now can't get a job. Ah, South Africa. You've got a God, but it ain't the one in heaven. It's not Jesus. Stop patronizing him with the national anthem. Stop causing soccer players and rugby players to sing that stupid song. Because frankly, at this point, it is not in service of your nation at all. You are blasphemous to the Lord on high. It's written in God's word that the prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. And since our national anthem is a prayer to God, he considers it an abominable, an, abom an abomination. It is a stench in his nostrils because it is coming from the mouths of people whose hearts are far from him. Far from him. Even though their lips are ever like no ceasing and ending I think I know you can you see in Canada now yo You know can me join you me time does on you too Go see she get it off a wife for who Who see get it off a wife for who More than I will look at the shop as I also for what for who Hello my name is Hello my name is Rattel a lawyer Let down with you have kicked Karawa out of Corpus Africa for what for who nobody knows Like Papa You are lukewarm and seeker sensitive and you've made a woman wanna die So confess yourselves as exactly what you are Jezebel you are a woman that claims herself a prophetess that is going to be thrown on a sick bed that is going to cause all those who tolerate her to be thrown into great tribulation. That's who you are. If I can't look forward to a rapture dream, recalling it in the morning, and all that comes out of my mouth is snot and tran, because I'm always in so much pain. I am no longer living in a Christian nation. I am living in a nation that is hard knock all up in that business about being with Baal. You are Baal worshippers, South Africa. Whoever you want to call Baal, be it Allah. Whoever you want to call Baal, be it ancestors. Whoever you want to call Baal, be it Hindu gods. Whoever you want to call Baal, be it your own atheism, your own sense of morality, whatever is right in your own eyes. Call it whatever, but it's all just Baal. You don't worship God. Is that basic? The fact that my life is like this? Travesty. Absolute freaking abomination. But no. You're not listening to me, are you? Because your best friend sitting over there in the United States of America has made sure that nobody hears what I have to say. But either way, non ke bolile. You have made Christians' lives a living nightmare. You've made me want to leave. You've made me envy.
covet the death of saints. You've made me long to be in heaven when God has a job for me. Whatever that job might be, I'm not doing it with gladness. There is a lot of bitterness in my spirit. I am struggling to turn the other cheek. I am feisty. I am on the rooftops lacking gentleness. And as a result of lacking gentleness, I'm threatened with being like Ephesus, the church. I am like a loud gong and a clanging cymbal because you are indecorous. You have no self-respect. You have got a bad demeanor. About yourself, you're like a snarling, growling demon. All you can do is growl. You pounce on people. You seek to devour them. And then you hope your land is going to thrive. How in the world does a land thrive when it does not take care of its citizens? And how does a land thrive when even though it calls itself Christian, it's standing with Islamic terrorism? I'm sorry. It's over. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Quen K. Bye-bye.